Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Do Bonsai. I'm Scott Winard, and today is clean up day for the tent. I've already uh, removed the poinsettia that was in there, um, but if I just bring you in to have a look at the tent. We can see that we've got quite a few plants in there that need to come out. The two ficuses, some jades, the larger jade bonsai, uh, the sagarita that's down the bottom there and the, the ones that we repotted just before I went off on a trip. They seem to be uh, suffering from a bit of contamination from inside so we'll get all those out and we'll do some clean up work on all of those plants uh, and we will clean down the inside of the tent so we'll get the tent cleaned up we're going to be using a solution of jay's fluid this is the jay's fluid that i'm going to be using uh, heavily watered down because you don't need too much of the main liquid itself i've already watered it down and placed it into this spray bottle so we'll get all the plants out and then we can start spraying and cleaning Last one. So the first thing we'll do is get out all the leaves that have fallen off. There is a bit of a smell in here. get all the rotting leaves out it really does smell so this was definitely needing doing and we'll take our mixture of Jay's fluid and we'll spray all the way around and, uh, and then let it sit and then come at it with a cloth and wipe it all down That's a lot nicer smell coming in from the jays. So this will kill all of the bugs and anything that's uh, that's in there. We normally use this for doing greenhouses, uh, so. This will work really well for the uh, for the tent, and it'll kill all the little bugs that are in here. I'll just get the inside of the door and give that a spray.
there is some residue on the inside of the door so it would be good to get that white and we'll just let that sit for a few moments now what I have is some non-abrasive scouring type pads um, I've been using these to put the oil on my uh, sides in the kitchen where I've sanded down and put the Osmo oil onto the sides so these are rough enough to take the uh, excess bits off the back but not rough enough to damage the mylar type material that we've got so I'll just give it a, a good wipe And that is loosening it all off around the edges. So we'll carry on with this and then we'll come in with a, a lint-free cloth and try and wipe everything away to get rid of all the excess residue. So as you can see it's taken off quite a bit onto that pad. I will use the spray again just to get a bit more liquid in. And we can actually see the dirt coming down and going straight into the bottom. So we'll be able to mop all that out with a cloth or even a, a mop and bucket. So I've got a nice big lint-free rag cloth here. I'll just give the floor a bit of a wipe. But this now, I should be able to, to come in and wipe it all nice and clean. Straight away you can see the rag's doing its job. So that's a pretty good job made of the tent. Uh, we've got a little bit of titivation to do, which I'll do now. Um, but uh, once we've done that, I'll see you downstairs where we can start doing some nice uh, cleanup work on the plants that have come out so that we can get them back in. So here we are downstairs. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at the trees and plants that we're going to be working on. We're just going to be doing some tidy up, some light trimming and just clean up just to uh, get everything back into nice clean shape. Uh, make some of these a bit more compact so that when they go back into the tent they're not taking up so much room. This one is needing a lot of work you can see all the contamination on there, that black sootiness again. Um, we're going to be trimming 
some of those branches back, get rid of some of the what appears to be dead foliage and uh, just bringing it back nicely as best we can. We've got some jades, they're just some cuttings so we'll, we'll clean those up and uh, give them a nice water and then we've got the Dracaena dragon plant that uh, just needs to be made sure that's nice and clean. These four are the ones that we repotted before I went to Prague so they should just need a light trim and a clean up, uh, clean up the top of the soil, make sure that that's free from any eggs or anything that's been going on. I have already just sprayed them with a light solution of water with soap so we'll get started with the four smaller bonsais and get them cleaned up and then uh, see how we progress. So here we are downstairs finally ready to uh, to get to work. Uh, I've, I've just shown you the, the plants that we've got to work on. I think this is going to be a multi-part video <clears throat> but we're going to start by tidying up the the new trees that uh, that came uh, just before we uh, before I set off for Prague. Um, these seem to have been affected the most for for some reason. I'm not sure why. The uh, the Fukian tea, the uh, Sarigetia Chinese plum, um, the Carmona, I think, which is the Fukian tea. Um, I, think, I think it is three Fukian teas and uh, the one Sarigetia. I'd have to check back, um, but they all pretty much uh, the same. They are looking in pretty poor shape so they're going to need a good clean up. Uh, the Chinese plum, the Sarigetia, I think we just need to just need to remove the the dead leaves that have accumulated on on the top of the soil. Uh, I have already given these a bit of a spray with the um, soap and water so we will have to come back in with some nice water afterwards. Uh, there's a lot of uh, roots coming out at the top here so even though we only repotted these um, a few, well it was November, end of no, towards the end of November I believe uh, when I went to Prague, um, it does look as if there's been a lot of growth up above because it was a nice compact canopy and it looks like the the root system has really enjoyed being in the tent. There's roots everywhere and it does seem to be pushing the soil up and out. But for today, we're just going to take the canopy back, bring everything back in, try and get in and see any dead structure that we can and just get it so that it can go back into the, uh, back into the tent and, uh, and carry on growing. So we'll just come in with uh, a pair of scissors and just bring the branching back in with the uh, you know back in line with how the canopy is and was so just pruning back as far as we can at least leaving two sets of leaves on the branches but taking it back into the original canopy as it was. There's some dead structures here which we'll take that off, take that bit away. A bit died off there and a bit of die back there. So it has died back in a few places. That might be something to do with the roots where we uh, when we repotted it but we'll just get inside and take out what we can and just do a general tidy up so that uh, we can get it back into the back into the tent uh, some of this is growing out quite well at the bottom so we'll just trim those back it has grown really well it's done a fantastic growth spurt in the tent but we'll just take it back as far as 
we reasonably can. Again, leaving at least two leaves on the branching so that we've got that branch selection for when we come back. I mean, already we're uh, we're down to a lot better canopy size for it going back into the tent. We will take this one back a little bit more and we will bring that one back to there. That's not looking too bad. It, just give it a profile prune around the edges. Taking any of these dieback branches away. That one's died back, so we'll take that back to there. And there are just some small dead branches in the middle, which we'll just try and get the foliage out and away so that when we come to it next time, we can see in. But it doesn't look too too bad. So this was, oh, this was the ligustrum, this one, not the sagarita. So apologies for that. So we'll just give it a, a spin and just see if there's anything obvious that we need to work on. We have a, a few branches that are coming up from the leaders and this one here appears to be the one that we would have as the leader going forward. So we will leave that growing for now. I don't want to take too much off anyway. Um, it is going to need a lot of upper canopy work going forward. But for now, as I keep saying, we just want to get it to a position where it can go back into the tent. Now there doesn't seem to be much issue with flies or anything on the branches etc. So we'll accept that, the <clears throat> that this one's nice and clean from any infection. I think we're, we're quite okay with that. And I think uh, that is pretty much ready to go back in barring a, a good water. So we'll just put that one to one side and we'll bring in this one that really does need quite a bit of work. We'll just take the foliage away that's on the top. Soil's damp, so that's, you know, it should be okay. But we did, we did spray the leaves. Uh, this one, we've got quite a bit of dirt on the foliage, so we'll just brush this up as best we can. We do have some diebacks and some leaves that have died back quite a lot. So we'll just take the the dead branches away if they if that's where they're coming from. Some some of them certainly look as if they are, but uh, yeah, the uh, they did enjoy these trees by the looks of it. But there is some lovely fresh growth coming out of the top of some of these, and some tiny little leaves coming through. So it looks like you know the treatment that we had already given the. Um, the tent to clear the flies was working um, and this was just obviously still covered from where the flies had attacked it so we'll we'll clean it up as as nicely as we can and hopefully we'll get some be able to promote the the growth on the branches the tiny little leaves that are coming through that's really good to see um, this video was supposed to be done earlier on today uh, but I started cleaning out the um, the tents 
which took quite a bit of time. And then lo and behold, uh, Nigel Saunders released a video of his time in Toronto with David. And uh, I ended up spending my time watching that one. And then he, he said he was gonna release the second one, the part two, and not keep us waiting. So we I held, held off and lo and behold, it did it did get posted so I ended up spending a bit of time watching and re-watching a few bits of Nigel's video that he put out today uh, he's done a lot of work got a new uh, bonsai tree on the go a geranium I believe it was so as he said in his video he's unusual bonsai collection has uh, grown by one more so we're just being careful to try not to uh, damage these leaves too much because I want to try and keep as much on as possible but there is a lot of new a lot of new growth on here which I'm quite encouraged by it's all over the, the branches, um, so if I can just get this um, black sooty rubbish off the structure, I'll be happy. The only problem is, is working our way through the, br the branch structure. Uh, yeah the branch structure to get it nice and clean and free from the the black sooty mold we are losing some of the bigger branches the ones that will be doing most of the uh, photosynthesis in the um, in the tent but the little ones coming through are actually coming through so they'll be doing a job also um, I am beginning to remember these a little bit now. The branch structure on these are rather interesting. They go all manner of directions. But we'll get it as clean as we can. Make sure that there's uh, none of that sooty mould on or any residue of the flies which could give us egg you know which could be hiding the eggs which could uh, reinfest the um, the tent so it's actually coming up quite well we have lost quite a bit of foliage off it i'm just uh, toying with the idea of taking off this long branch but um, i am resisting at this moment there are some leaves coming through it and I believe if we uh, leave it as much as we can the tree will do a lot better job. Just take away the, the leaves that are on the soil and I think that's not too far off. Just about got all of that away I've always found that leaf work is the most laborious of it I've seen people sit for hours with the milk and water solution giving the leaves a nice bit of cleaning up treatment to get nice nice clean flashy leaves I've never really had the patience for it myself but um, I think for the purposes of this sort of work you would have to um, and obviously we have to be to get as much of this cleaned off as possible so I'm happy with that one 
that's as clean as it's going to get. We'll just put that one out to one side. These will go across to the sink and we'll rinse them through with lots of water. It's a shame really because these did go through really nice when, uh, when we got them. We did the late night um, pruning of the roots and repotting. We've got a little uh, shoot coming off the side here. It'll be interesting to see if that does anything but all this is just covered in the sooty mould that the uh, the flies have created by secreting the sticky residue which has just gone mouldy and then the mould is a black horrible looking mess and uh, just takes time to try and clean them up. We, will, we are going to continue to lose lots of leaves but as long as there's a substantial amount of leaves left on at least the tree's got some chance to do a nice recovery in the tent upstairs. So the, the structure in this is a, it's a mess, it was a mess originally and we intentionally left it last time and uh, beginning to wish we didn't because it would have made the clean up a lot, a lot easier. Um, I would say clean up is being hampered somewhat. By the branch system being so busy and this definitely wants some branch pruning going forward and I, I know we did say that originally as well so but we decided to leave it and uh, we've got to live with that I'm actually knocking the roots about here trying to get this cleared through a lot of work. So we continue to lose leaves. I'll hold the trunk and do the brushwork as best I can. Could do with another set of hands. There are some nice leaves coming out of this again, same as the uh, last one that we did. So there are positive signs. They are strong trees underneath all this, um, but there are a lot of bits that are just coming away. Some of them will have broken and rotted away from the previous work that we did, um, but some of it's going to be purely because of the insect tissue that we've had. So I think what we'll do is we'll let these grow and as long as we don't have any further fly problems we'll get these out as spring is well on its way and bring them outside and then one at a time we'll have them in and give them a real good clean up and a real good work into on the, uh, on the branches. And again, we'll get these over to the sink to give them a nice rinse through. So we'll just put that one across. These were all repotted into Akadama and it, to be honest with you, it was the Akadama that I think caused most of the problem because I hadn't really had this sort of problem until we use the Akadama. We had had flies, but not, not to the degree that uh, it caused this sort of 
mess to the leaves and you know the, the amount of flies was just crazy but again um, the tents are relatively new so it might have just been the confined space of the tent and the flies were just loving the environment that they'd created inside the tent and um, you know it could have been that that uh, created the even better uh, environment for the flies to breed and multiply and you know they're, they're, they're trapped in there so they're just going to do as much damage to those as possible they don't fly off and leave us alone and I do think that um, these trees they must have preferred these trees to most of the others that are in there because the jades don't seem to have been touched that much and only a few leaves on the ficus plants have got any uh, moldy moldiness to them and they um, were actually up against or near these so I think the uh, the ligustrum and the Fukian tea were just a, a magnet for the flies and the flies thrived because of these plants also but it was just strange that it was the first time really using pure Akadama and I was just wondering whether the, the batch of Akadama I got could have been you know infested in some way with with eggs and whatnot I doubt it but you know it was just you, you look for reasons as to why things have happened and uh, I think if I'm honest with myself I'd say that it must have been the the environment of the tents and it's a coincidence that uh, we were using Akadama for the first time and um, the environment of the tent has kept the flies in the flies have multiplied and really enjoyed these trees and uh, yeah had a good feast on them so i'm going to take these over give them a, a rinse off and we'll get them up into the tent uh, and then we'll come back and work on a, a couple of the other trees okay so you can't really see me that well here behind this multi-trunk ficus that we have there's a lot of uh, bits of aerial roots and stuff coming down here so this will be repotted later this year um, but there is just some of the leaves where they were near those other trees have got that blackening on but it's only a few of them so we'll quickly clean that off I have sprayed the whole tree just in case with soap and water so it'll get a full rinse afterwards but we can see we've got lots of, lots of nice growth coming out of this uh, we do have a number of dead leaves on the inside so we'll just try to, to get in and take as many of those out as we can and we're going to have a, a nice bit of work to do on this ficus later in the year um, I will just try and cheat and just try and get the leaves <laughs> out by tipping them up and letting them fall through the branch structure instead of uh, trying to pick them out there are a, a number of them falling into the branch structure and I find it easier with these just to turn them upside down and basically comb out the leaves as opposed to combing out the roots so we'll just work our way around taking out all the, the dead leaves that are in there there are quite a few and I think we're going to have fun pruning this later this year and doing a bit of work to it so that's a lot of 
the leaves from in in the middle and if I just spin it around I'll see if I can see any of the leaves which have got the blacking on like I said there was only a handful of leaves and I think I'm back here to where I was working on a few leaves so we'll just tidy these up yeah a couple of them got got really well but um, mostly this tree was left alone but we just need to make sure that there's nothing that, uh, that any of the flies or, or whatever have, have left behind but um, we do look relatively clean I'm probably making more mess with my dirty fingers so I'll just go in and pick out some of these dead leaves again that I can see and this is a really nice tree I can't wait to do some proper proper work on it this this branch here seems to have had most of the blackened effects so I'm just going to take that off because I'm sure I keep coming back around to that one and there's one just round here with a few blackened leaves and I keep coming back to the same ones trying to clean them and I'll just take off the ones that are uh, contaminated but on the whole there was only just a a couple of branches that seem to be reaching in towards the other trees that got got affected so on the whole this Benjamina got away with it but we're going to grow it as a multi-trunk bonsai and it got all these trunks that are tied together so there's a lot of growing for it to do to to grow in um, but yeah I think for the time being that can go back in and we will have a look at the other ficus which is a weeping ficus and there's a number of dead leaves in here there's a lot of uh, aerial type roots it's really busy there's a lot of um, foliage needs to be sorted out we've got our work cut out for this one um, I think what we might do for now is just give it a, a profile prune in order for it not to take up too much room in the plant room there doesn't seem to be too much blackening of the leaves and I think we'll probably be taking that off with the profile pruning so I'm going to start from this side and just take it back and work my way around and hopefully as it starts rotating around you'll be able to see where I've given a profile prune And eventually we'll be able to get into the structure of this tree and give it what it really needs a proper a proper going up but for the time being we'll just take it back to get it into some sort of shape that we'll be able to work with in future although it will have grown and we'll be back to where we were hopefully if it's done done its job and uh, carried on growing for us
We'll just take out some of the lower ones as well so that we can hopefully see the bit of the trunk. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in here and we'll just take the canopy down to an acceptable height. There's lots of new growth going on, so I'm not having to be too selective with where we're pruning back to because there's just a lot of growth. You just have to go careful not to take too much off because obviously it does send its sap to the extremities to heal itself. So we'll just take out the, the dead leaves that are accumulating at the bottom. There's lots of uh, these aerial roots that are coming out. I'll leave them for now. We're not going to take any of those away. But we've got Probably should have a pair of tweezers to uh, to get in and pull these leaves out. Well, my big fat fingers will have to do for now. I am getting some of the sap on my hands, which probably isn't good for me. But we've got that back to a, a position where we can let it grow again. And then come the spring we'll be able to do some proper bonsai work on it. So we'll rinse these through with some nice water and try and make sure that they're nice and clean, ready to go back in with the rest of the plants and trees. One thing just to, to mention there as we were working on those fags is the Benjaminer, um, when you cut the branches and the leaves it secretes a, a milky white sap which can be toxic uh, it can cause a irritation for us which I was reminded of because I had a, a little cut on my back of my hand and a bit of it dripped into there and I could feel it tingling away and stinging but the main reason I uh, bring it up and mention it is it's obviously toxic to animals and seeing as I've got young young Peter walking around down here I've had to be very careful not to lose any leaves and not to let any of the sap go anywhere um, because obviously I don't want any problems with uh, with our young Peter but he's he's laid in his bed and he's quite happy I'll just give you a quick show of that so he's got a nice little new bed that we got him today and he's nice and happy laid in there he loves it so that's Peter in his in his nice bed that he loves now um, so we've got uh, left, we have the larger jade, which I've put out of the way. We have two bowls of jade cuttings, which I'm not going to do a massive amount with. Uh, I'm probably just going to get them uh, put away. But I do have the planting that we did uh, when I first started the channel, which was taken out of a pot and we got this desert island effect planting um, and I think some of this just needs a bit of a tidy up we do have uh, some leaves that are scorched and scarred so I'm just gonna take those off uh, some of it purely for aesthetics because it just doesn't look nice um, the tree itself the plant itself Seems okay. I think the flies must have walked over it in a in a few areas, um, but there's not a lot we can really do about it on on the jade. Um, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of leaves which are showing a bit of damage so we'll just take those away 
an old branch there that uh, has shriveled up and gone from where we pruned it last time. There's a, a real lot of growth in this canopy up top. It's uh, it's grown really well up in this uh, top canopy. We've just got some bits that just, just really need tidying up and cleaning out. But on the whole, the jades haven't been affected too much apart from the bigger leaves. If you can see, they've got that scorch marking on the nice, big, thick, lush, juicy leaves. They, they're really well, but aesthetically, that scarring on the leaf isn't great. Although, it, yeah, it's you can scrape it off, but you're actually going into the uh, into the flesh of the the leaf. So we'll just take the ones off that don't look too great. And the, the, it's due a prune off anyway, so the, the upper growth has gone on really strong and some of these lower ones aren't really getting a lot of light anyway. I think what we'll do later in the year is we'll trim it back again and create more cuttings and there'll, there'll be more cuttings that I'll be giving away. So the constant supply of, of cuttings from these jays just, just keep flowing. So there's not really a lot of overall cleanup that's required on the jades. The leaves just they don't like having water from the top so if you water them from the top you end up with all the white spots on them and it it just gets collected by the the leaves um, and they sort of go get some sort of pittedness to them and when they swell up again with a good water it can sort of go away but um, you always end up with that dimply white spotted effect and you can keep wiping them and cleaning them and it, it goes away but it comes back from, from what I've found. So that will get a little rinse through and a watering and we'll find somewhere for that. I don't think it's going to go back into the tent upstairs. And these cuttings that we've got, uh, some of these are, we'll see whether we can clean some of these leaves. But the leaves don't really like being touched by water from the top. They uh, they react quite badly, and they like I say, you get all these little dimples. And whatever you can see in the top of those leaves, they uh, they have received a bit of water from the top top watering, and they just don't like it. You can wipe it off with your hands. But uh, I'm not sure what it is. I will look into it and Google it a bit more because me being this self-professed jade lover, you'd think I'd actually know a little bit more about them. But uh, we'll give them a, a good bit of a clean up and remove some of the the dead foliage that's that's in here. But all in all, it's not too bad a condition. And we'll be able to take these cuttings out, remove all the scarred leaves, keep them growing, and then uh, transplant them on. And then the new leaves won't have up the pittedness to them and they'll carry on okay. So we'll just Put that to one side and then we have a larger, a larger set of cuttings. Which 
they were near the trees that were being infected and they do they did receive a bit of blackening but one minute you look at them and they're blackened and the next minute you look at them and they weren't so I don't really know what it was doing but it on, on some parts it, they were like being eaten away and drying up like that especially around this side so we'll just take off the leaves that that was happening to you can see that they looked like they were having a good feast on some of those leaves but they weren't too bothered about the plant itself so we'll just remove the the leaves that are scorched or damaged or shriveled up and we'll allow the whole thing to keep on growing looks like there's something in at the top here so we'll just give that a wipe and a clean they say all this about they don't like water at the top and here's me going at them with water on a toothbrush so I'll be interested to see what damage I create with this but I will be taking it to the sink and wiping it off cleaning it off with some some cloths but uh, jades always come back they do re they're really hardy they're really good and a lot of this we'll be able to just trim up plant on create a few cuttings out of each one of these cuttings but there's a lot of them with the the white spottiness and that's when some water has been sat on the top and it's uh, just stayed there and it just seems to pit in and create like a white calcium -y sort of effect I will um, look into it a lot more and find out why and what the actual science is behind it but that's just what I've witnessed that happens so I think yeah, that's that's that one pretty much tidied up and our last one which is the dragon's tree I think we just need to brush down the leaves they're not blackened or anything but they've they've been in and they do have some marking on them I've taken all most of the dead leaves away already force of habit as I came down the stairs I was taking the dead leaves away so I don't get to do that here but uh, these leaves are pretty much okay they've actually done really well in the in the tent upstairs it could probably do with repotting into a slightly bigger pot to keep it growing um, it hasn't had amazing growth but the uh, the roots seem to be pulling the thing out of the pot so I think the roots are doing something great and the, uh, the leaves are getting into a position where I might be able to trim these back to try and create a, a bonsai out of them now I have tried on a number of occasions with these I love the idea of this being a bonsai um, I've seen Nigel Saunders do it uh, with good success actually I, you know I, I always look forward to the updates on the dragon's tree um, one of my one of my favorites of of Nigel's apart from his lemon tree which I think is probably my utmost favorite but I think that's that's in all then brushed through so we'll get everything rinsed off and uh, start getting them back into the, into the tent there is just one more now I did put this into the tent and you can see right at the top it's really gone bushy at the top where it was actually quite thin and this is a 
uh, oh my word, Camisi Paris, Thoides, Thoides, Camisi Paris, it's, you buy them in the, in the shops as a, as a mini Christmas tree, and we, we bought a couple of these for Christmas, and uh, with the idea that, um, afterwards, rather than chucking them away, I might be able to, uh, do something, you know, create some sort of bonsai with them. They're nice and flexible at the top, so we'll, you know, we can select one main trunk and create some sort of S shape or something like that. Maybe do a bit of wiring, which I don't normally do, but uh, I have wired uh, a couple of trees in the past, and it'd be interesting just to try and do some again. Um, so this, I don't, you know, this was just in totally the opposite corner to anything else in the tent. So I don't think this has really become infested with anything. This will just need pulling out of its pot, finding out where its root base is, and then we can start pulling the branches down to, uh, to see which is going to create some of our branch structure and which is going to be the main trunk for our bendy S shape. Uh, but we did get, in the tent, we did get some nice new growth and really at the top it ballooned out. It did, uh, <laughs> it did a little bit too well, I suppose. I mean, we'd probably look to trim that and that and then take that one off towards the top if we were having it back as a, a Christmas tree. But there's a lot of nice growth on that and uh, I think we'll look at taking that and making that into something that will be a, an exciting project with old Christmas material but we have two of these and one that got covered in the, uh, white snow spray and I don't know whether we'll be able to do anything with that I'm sure we can we'll be able to clear off some of the snow spray and by the time we've trimmed branches away we'll uh, we'll have something to work with so We'll get these rinsed through and then I'll see you upstairs just to show everything back in bed, uh, back in the tent. Nearly forgot. Before I run away, I did get this poinsettia at Christmas um, with the main idea of creating a poinsettia bonsai. Um, but this too has been sat in the corner of the same tent and I'm literally just going to take a number of these leaves off even these lovely red ones they've got some markings on them so it's for me it's better just to take them away and uh, we'll work with what's left these also create leave a, a milky sap so just be careful with these also um, inside here we've got some dead leaves and some dead parts where it's died back. Uh, whether that was anything to do with the flies or whether it's just the fact they weren't getting enough um, light within the tent, I'm not sure. The soil is pretty damp so it was getting watered well enough. Um, but we'll just take away firstly the leaves that need taken away and then we will just give it a bit of a prune to uh, to get it back to something that we can leave to grow <coughs> to then come back and work on it. <coughs> so there's a few of these leaves that don't look fantastic so we'll get rid of those and then just looking at the branching that we've got where it disappears and goes off too far we'll take away the growth that's going out too far for us and create more space within the tent anyway. 
So this would have normally wasted away and gone into the bin with it being a Christmas tree plant and uh, most people they can't keep them alive so they end up going into the bin anyway so let's see what we can do in the realms of bonsai for this little fella that would have normally been destined for the bin now down here we have an area where it goes into multiple trunks so i'm just going to take that one that we've already trimmed back i'm going to take it right back and then we'll have a look and just see where it breaks into <clears throat> more trunks so the main leader is coming up the middle there and this other one's competing with it but we'll leave them for now um there's one right in the middle that we'll just take away because it's not contributing at all bit of dead leaves get them out yeah right in the middle we've got what probably was the original trunk that was cut back and these branches have come out and created this lovely foliage so we'll just trim back the stems that I've cut away and I think although there's still quite a bit of work to do on it I think we can leave it at that up here up this one we've got a lot of new growth coming in up the top there so it will be which way we decide to take it but yeah there's a lot of options with this these leaves are shading each other out so I will just take the bottom one away and leave those in so we'll leave that as is just tidy up the soil and that's the poinsettia that I nearly forgot to uh, to show you. So there's a lot of big leaf foliage up there to do its job. We would normally trim it right back, but I want to just leave it and let it grow. And then we'll bring it out as spring is fully, fully here. And then we'll start, you know, doing some serious work to it, to set it on its way to be a bonsai. But for now, that's enough work on that. So here we are back upstairs, the plant tent the, uh, has been fully cleaned out. I ended up putting the jades back in for now, the planting, the cuttings, they're in place. The poinsettias, they're looking nice and colourful. Uh, the, all the, the trees, the citrus trees are there and in position, just hoping that they come back nicely. The two ficus trees looking nice on the side there got plenty of room to to grow and the dragon tree in the corner just carrying on growing so yes yeah, been a long long hard slog busy day cleaning out this tent we'll have to make sure that uh, we try to stave off any infestation like that again because that's been a a lot of hard work but uh, I think hopefully in the long run a lot of worthwhile hard work. So thanks for watching I'm Scott Winard and uh, this is Let's Do Bonsai and we'll see you again soon.